environmental consequences of contamination with transgenic DNA are many, and uh, they're of different natures, you know. At the simplest level, they, you could say there are as many possible consequences as there are different transgenic manipulations. And because the number of transgenic manipulations is endless, you know, you can, people are manipulating or trying to manipulate corn, for example, to produce pharmaceuticals, to produce plastics, to produce, um, there is this horrendous spermicidal corn, there is uh, also to produce that insecticide, also to be resistant to herbicides and so on. So you just dream it. Somebody is trying to manipulate corn for that purpose. So each one of those products, or so-called products, each one of those manipulations will have different consequences. The BT producing corn, for example, the corn producing a toxin that kills insects, has serious consequences because it's leaking that insecticide into the environment. For example, through the roots, we now know that a lot of that BT toxin goes into the soil and, um, and alters the microbial and insect community in the soil. the herbicide expressing genes or plants um, also has consequences because it's going to alter the way um, the crop as well as its relatives will respond to the herbicide. You have the development of herbicide resistance. And just like that, you know, you start looking at each one of the different so-called products of genetic manipulation and they have uh, each one a different consequence. Now, you can spend your life chasing each one of these biotech companies and uh, trying to find out what they're thinking, what they're doing, and, um, and responding to each one of their products as it comes out. There are other levels of analysis, however, where you don't need to worry about that, where I say, I don't care what you're proposing. There are very specific problems inherent in, in the manipulation that, that make me very worried. Uh, for starters, the transgenic manipulation requires a so-called vector, as well as other pieces of DNA that go together with the piece that you want to insert into these organisms, that makes, they, the, all these other pieces of DNA make this DNA attached to it promiscuous. That means the DNA that that you are manipulating is not just any piece of DNA. It's a piece of DNA that will, that has the property of inserting itself in different places. Wherever it finds an organism, wherever it finds a genome, it will, tr it will insert itself quite successfully. That's why we, you know, that's why we manipulated it that way. Uh, so having that type of DNA released in the environment that we know is going is promiscuous, that we know is going to move more than any normal piece of DNA, is problematic. You can think of it as though you are, you are introducing viruses and bacteria into the environment that have new reshuffled um, uh, properties and that are going to destabilize the biology of those crops as well as any other organism that they can find themselves into. In. Uh, the fact that they are promiscuous too makes them uh, liable to move horizontally. That means, or so-called horizontal gene transfer. That means that they can move from the species where they were inserted through a virus, a bacterium, or sometimes directly into other organisms, insects, other microbes, other plants, and yes, even human beings. You know, they sooner or later we will start seeing that type of movement, horizontal gene transfer, and we have no idea about the consequences. Um, we have been putting out hundreds of thousands of acres of these crops without really knowing what the consequences are, and just that lack of knowledge is, is problematic to me. Um, one of the obvious consequences of that, especially because this promiscuity makes the pieces of DNA particularly fit, that means particularly successful at leaving progeny into the future, 
one of the consequences of that is that you will have the a, a, a trend, a tendency towards homogenization of the crops where you introduce these things. That means if this DNA starts moving around like it does and getting itself inserted in places like Oaxaca, where the world hopes to have the repository of genetic diversity, and starts pushing that diversity out and making those fields more homogeneous, then we're losing again. We're losing that diversity that we, we need, we really require for the future survival of the crop, and therefore the future survival of humanity. I mean, it's not, it's not an exaggeration to say that it's really world food sustainability that's at stake. Monsatano sets the standard for agriculture with technology that is changing the way farmers do business. Thank you.